You mentioned RSS feeds, and most people's eyes just sort of glaze over. It just sounds too complicated. Promise, this is easy. I'm going to walk you through the process and try to demystify reading the web through an RSS feed reader. Here we go. You're going to need two tools, and perhaps the best way to understand this is to use Facebook as an example. Facebook has two tools. The first is your account that you set up online, and then you've got to have a way to view that account, and Facebook allows you to see it on the web and through the Facebook app, whichever you prefer or both. Facebook is kind of clever. It's nothing but a collection of RSS feeds. Your account, your timeline, is actually nothing but an RSS feed. You publish your content, and Facebook distributes that content through an RSS feed, which they own, so they can restrict access to it. And then you've got advertisers that have their RSS feeds, and for a fee, Facebook lets them place their advertising into your timeline. But our goal is to minimize the Facebook presence in our lives. We need two tools, an account and a way to view that account. We're going to set up the account in Feedly. Feedly can be viewed on the web, and they also have apps that work on just about every platform that is out there. So we would have to set up a web account, and we can use the web to see it, or we can use their app. I personally am a Mac user, and I prefer the Reader app to read my RSS feeds. But notice, it's only a way to view it. So if I use the Reader app, which is what I'm going to show you how to do, I've got to connect it to my Feedly account. So why do I prefer the Reader app to the Feedly app? Well, to me, Reader is just a little bit simpler. It's like reading the morning newspaper as opposed to reading a magazine. For me personally, that's my preference. There's nothing wrong with the Feeder app. Lots of people prefer that. It's a personal call. So it's all pretty simple, really. An account that contains all of our RSS feeds and checks them to make sure they're up to date and a way to view that account. So there are a number of ways to set up an RSS account. These are a few. And at this URL, feedly.com slash apps.html, they list on the left-hand side all the different kinds of platforms, and you can click on one of those and see what apps you can use to view your Feedly account in. So here's an overview of what we're going to cover getting you started with an RSS reader. The first thing we're going to do is sign you up for a free account at Feedly.com. Then we're going to download the Reader 3 app on your device, whether it's a smartphone, a tablet, or a desktop. And then we're going to add your new Feedly account to the Reader 3 app. Really, really easy. Going to walk you right through it. Then we're going to add my blog, Tim's Reflection Connection, to our Reader app. You can configure the app if you want. We're just going to use it the way it comes right out of the box, so to speak. And then you'll want to check out your Reader app as often as you like to see what's new, what's been posted since the last time you checked. Let's get started. Signing up for a free account at Feedly.com. Let's do it. Here we are at Feedly.com. I'm going to click on Get Started for Free. And they have a pro account. Probably all you're going to need is the free version. So I'm going to continue with Feedly. We're going to set up a Feedly account. So there it is. That's as simple as it is. And frankly, we're done. I'm going to show you how easy it is to use their web version right here. It's quite easy. We're going to type in timtyson.us. This is my blog. And it's going to search the web and find my RSS feeds. It found them. Click follow. I mean, it's just that easy. Um, and then to log out, I would go up here and log out of my account. The next step is to use the Reader 3 app, and we're going to download that now. Here I am in the App Store on the Mac, 
And if I were on an iOS device, I would just simply go to the App Store on that device. I've already downloaded this app. I don't know what it costs. I think it's very inexpensive. The Feedly app is advertised as free. So you can download it and try it too. The next thing that you need to do is connect your Feedly account to your reader app. Really simple. Let's do it. First time you launch the reader app and here's the list of accounts that it accepts. We're using Feedly. We're going to continue with Feedly because we've set up our Feedly account. Now I want to show you on this side here is our Feedly account. That's actually the email address that I use as a demo. I can set up multiple accounts if I want. I could have an account for my personal reading, for my professional reading, my work. Totally up to you how many accounts you have and you just simply click the add button down here to add additional accounts. But selecting that account, we're going to add our first feed. Go down here, click on add, and again I'm typing tyson.us and I click on search. It's going to find all of my feeds that are there at my blog and I'm going to select the very first one and just read the new things that I publish. I can also decide where I want this feed to be stored. I can create folders so I could have a folder of news. I could have a folder for work. I could have a folder for my friends and my family, as many folders as you want. I'm just going to put it on the top level. Subscribe and there they are. These are the posts that I have most recently published at my blog. When I select it, a brief summary of the post appears. If I start to read and say this sounds interesting to me, I want to read the entire thing. I can click here and it will launch a browser. Here it comes. And I can read it here. It includes all the photos. Everything is just exactly as it appears on the web. It's a long post. And here's where I can do my comments if I want to do that. I can share the article in a variety of ways. I can refresh the page. I can go forward and back just like you can in a browser and when I'm done reading here I can click this to close this and return to the summary. Go to my next article or I can use my down arrow key to go to my next articles and you'll notice that as I visit the articles they gray out because I've read them. The count has gone down to three unread articles at this point. And when I return to Reader, or when I click on this again, the articles that I've already read disappear. If I want to see all of the articles that it still has, even though I've read them, I can click on this icon right here, and they return. If I star an article, I decide, oh, that's really something I want to come back to later, I can star it, and there would be a list of all the ones I've starred. And this is the list of the ones that I have yet to read. Really simple. To star the article, by the way, I simply click the star. And now it'll appear as a starred article. Reader, an easy way to keep track of your RSS feeds. I mentioned that there are many ways you can configure Reader. Once you become familiar with the app, I recommend that you explore in more detail some of the configuration settings. And finally, you'll want to check out Reader as often as you can because every time you go to it, the new content will appear. I hope that this has helped demystify RSS feeds and that you realize it is a really easy way to quickly read and stay current on content that you're interested in following. Unfortunately, you can't use an RSS feed reader to read your friend's Facebook timelines because Facebook successfully claims legal ownership of those RSS feeds. But if your friends have blogs, if there are other websites that you find of interest, you can keep current with those using this simple method. Thanks for watching.